Hi guys, Mr. Mime is back. I'm back. I'm back with more Genshin Impact news. And today we have finally a preview of the next limited characters, limited time banner, which will drop in patch 1.2, which will be soon. So should we pull on this banner or is better? It's better to keep your gems, your primos for the next banner as we know that a waifu is coming and yeah i will definitely pull on uh, that juicy waifu but what we do now what we do well to be honest mihoyo got us as this banner is insanely good especially for free to players why well because it has free probably the best the best support in the game the funny thing about this banner is that people are gonna pull on it. Not because Albedo, because just of the four stars. They are so solid, solid units. And if you are free to play, I don't think you can you can skip this banner. So let's jump on the characters. So here we are on Fischl, one of the greatest units in the game. Not only, she's also an amazing waifu. A lot of people just pull her for her cuteness. And yeah, jokes aside, let's analyze her skills. Her skills pretty much revolves around odds. He deals AoE damage when you summon it. And then he starts attacking and attacking and attacking and attacking. He deals insane damage. An amazing way also to create combination, proc, elemental reaction etc etc her burst midnight phantasmagoria not only gives facial an amazing mobility but when used you also reset odds presence on the field so with some with some proper cooldown you can make sure that odd stays in the field for a long long time which is what you actually want but yes, most of the time you're gonna use her burst just to escape critical situation. But honestly, where Fischl actually shines is her constellation. When odds is not present in combat, which means when odds is in cooldown, when the elemental skill is in cooldown, he will still attack. He will fire the joint attack, dealing 22% of attack damage. This constellation is pretty good if you want to make official your dps i honestly don't use it a lot but yes this unlocks an amazing dps damage trust me there is a lot of builds online and probably i will also post mine in the future constellation 2 is pretty much a huge buff to her damage when Night Raider is used, it deals an additional 200% attack as damage. Its AoE is increased by 50%. Which means when you can also pair with characters as Sucrose or Venti, if you have one, you're gonna, you're gonna have fun. You're gonna have fun. Because when enemies are all grouped like that, the AoE is gonna be juicy. Constellation 3 increase the level of Night Raider by 3 which means all is gonna deal more and more damage. Constellation 4 not only is a buff to her burst, as you're gonna deal more and more damage, but when the skill ends, Fischl gonna heal 20% of her HP. And this is pretty important, especially if you wanna bring her in Abyss mode. Her Constellation 5 is a buff to Phantasmagoria, and we end with her constellation 6 extend the duration of odds present in the field by 2 seconds and additionally odds attacks with your active character when present dealing 30% of official attack as electro damage insane which means pretty much translated that your characters when you attack with your characters you're going to deal 30% of official attack as electro damage and this is nuts this it's gonna buff your damage, your team damage, insanely. People overlook to this, people say, but Lorenz is just 30%, 30% is a lot, 30% is a lot. Trust me, 
this is pretty good. Moving next, we have Sucrose. Well, Sucrose kit works around heavy crowd control, heavy CC, similar to Venti. We have her elemental skill, unstable creation, which pretty much is a small win that we're gonna suck, is gonna suck and pull uh, in everything, enemies, objects, like Goba, like Klee traps, and gonna deal, of course, an ammo damage. Her burst, similar, similar to Venti burst, is gonna suck again every single enemy in, gonna pull inside it multiple times, multiple times, gonna deal an ammo damage, swirl effect, etc, etc. So far she seems pretty much a budget Venti, but where is actually the difference from Venti? Well, pretty much... If we move to her talent, Catalyst Conversion, when Sucrose triggers a Swirl Reaction, all characters in the party with the matching element have their Elemental Master increase by 50. This is huge. And the second talent, when Unstable or Forbidden Creation hit an opponent, increase all party, all party, excluding Sucrose, Elemental Mastery by an amount equal of 20% of Sucrose Elementary Mastery, which means if you give her a lot, a lot of Elementary Mastery, all your team is gonna benefit from it. So, moving on to the Constellation. Constellation 1, Unstable Creation gains one additional charge, which means more pulling power, more heavy crowd control, which is what you want, especially in Abyss, guys. Remember, Venti and Sucrose really shines in Abyss, as you're gonna have to deal with multiple threats at the same time, and having something that pulls everything in, it's what you want. It's Moving on to the second constellation, we have an increased duration of Forbidden Creation. Again, beautiful, more crowd control, more, more CC, you want even more. Constellation 3 is going to increase the damage of Unstable Creation. Constellation 4, every 7 normal and charge attacks, Sucrose will reduce the cooldown of an unstable creation by 1 to 7 seconds. Insanely good. Constellation 5, again, another upgrade, more damage. But yes, this is pretty much a common thing. There's always two constellations in every single character where you see that just brutal boost to the damage. Constellation 6, Forbidden Creation, Triggers and Elemental Absorption, all party members gain a 20% Elemental Damage bonus for the corresponding Absorbed Element during its duration. And because Forbidden Creation sticks a lot in the field, well, this means a lot lot of damage for all your party, for all your rotation, which is what you actually want, more damage. An amazing support, an amazing Anemo crowd control unit. And finally we have Bennett. Bennett Elemental Skill, Passion Overload. If you press it, a single Swift Flames strike that deals pure damage. If you hold it, it has two levels. Level 1, Strike Twice, dealing pure damage. Level 2, Unleash three consecutive attacks that deals impressive pure damage. But you're gonna get launched together with the, the enemies. Bennett takes no damage from being launched. His burst, which is the key ability of Bennett, that's why you want him on your teams. If the health of a card within the AoE is equal to or falls below 70% their health, we constantly regenerate. The amount of HP restores scales of Bennett max HP. Okay, Bennett max HP, which not means artifact. Don't take in consideration artifact. And if the health of a card within the AoE is higher than 70%, they gain an attack bonus that is based on Bennett base attack. Again, base attack means weapon plus uh, the character stats, we are not talking about artifacts, so you cannot actually boost more with your artifacts. So uh, take this in consideration. Imbues characters within the OE with Pyro, which is good. His 
talent info, decrease passion overload, cooldown by 20%, which is pretty good, even though passion overload has already a low cooldown, you will find out when you use it. His other ability, Fair North, within the area created by Fantastic Voyage, Passion Overload takes on the following effects. Cooldown is reduced by 50% and Bettent will not be launched by the effect of Charge Level 2. This is pretty much a way to uh, fix uh, that launching mechanics, which is pretty annoying. Moving to the Constellation, Constellation 1 is what you actually are aiming for if you are free to play because it unlocks almost the full potential of Bennett. Fantastic Voyage attack increase no longer has an HP restriction and gains an additional 20% of Bennett base attack. So not only you get removed from this restriction, but you also get more of Bennett attack, which is impressive. Moving to the second constellation, when Bennett HP falls below 70%, his energy recharge is increased by 30% which means more and more burst spam. I like it. I really love this constellation too. It really makes him shine. His burst, uh, you're, gonna, you're gonna spam it. Unstoppable Fervor, constellation 3. It is just a buff to Passion Overload. Constellation 4, using a normal attack when executing the second attack of Passion Overload, charge, Level 1 allows an additional attack to be performed. This additional attack does 135% of the second attack damage. This is a burst to his damage, nothing special. Actually, I'm not really interested in this. But yes, Constellation 5 increased the level of Fantastic Voyage by 3 levels. Constellation 6 is pretty much a buff, a pure buff damage to your teammates. A sword claymore or polearm wielding characters. When they are inside Fantastic Voyage, they gain a 50% Pyro damage bonus. Also, take this in consideration. Let's say with characters like uh, uh, Fischl, Constellation 6, that applies a 30% official attack as electro damage to your party, uh, that's not gonna stack. So take in consideration when you, you put more uh, characters that deal similar, similar bonus damage. As those things do not stack, so when you're building your team, you must take in consideration this mechanic. And as example, I can suggest you to pretty much put your Bennett in a Diluc team. As Diluc shines with pyro damage, he deals insane amount of pyro damage and Bennett gonna help him dealing even more. Well guys, this was my review of the incoming banner. With the Albedo banner, of course, we're gonna have a new weapon banner, but I'm not gonna review it. Those weapons are are pretty good, are pretty good, and there is not a lot to say about it. The Gacha weapons are pretty, pretty consistent and really boost your damage of your team, of your characters. Guys, if you did enjoy this video, please ring the bell, subscribe, check my lives. And yeah guys, that's it for today, see you guys on the next video.